What's going on fam? It's your boy Sydney from the NakedGardeners.com. Uh, today we're going to do an update and start fertilizing the tomatoes for this fertilizer experiment. Now last year uh, we started this and it started out pretty good. However, with this extreme heat, uh, it just kind of just stunted the growth of our tomatoes. And then towards the end of the summer, the tomatoes started to grow and start uh, doing their fruit. And then all of a sudden we had back-to-back -back weeks of tornado warnings where we had uh, one part uh, ripping up our uh, partial of the roof of our barn and just, it was just real hectic. The missus was all scared. And then a week, a few weeks after that, we'd had the Arctic blast, the ice storm, I guess you can say. And so we want to reload uh, this experiment and we're gonna do it right the right way this year. One way that we're going to improve this experiment is by doing it with determinate tomatoes. Uh, because here in the Northeast Texas zone 8A, we get high heat and it's also humid. We actually got warnings for the next 10 days, I believe, of being extreme heat, uh, a weather advisory. And so what we did is just grow with determinate tomatoes. Now, last year we had Roma tomatoes and the Bergese tomatoes, and those grew with no issues whatsoever in the, um, during the extreme heat. We was harvesting a lot of those tomatoes, and the missus actually was blanching those and putting them in the freezer, and she actually just made some uh, tomato sauce, I believe it was. But what we're going to do differently is, like I said, we're doing determinate tomatoes since they survive the extreme heat just in case if we get another extreme heat and what i also have right here is we're growing some uh, okra which is some heat loving plants and we're also going to be growing some flowers uh, we got some sun sunflowers going up through here i probably put some more and what's that's going to do since this is the east we're going to have, hopefully have this kind of blocking uh, some of the this UV rays uh, onto the plants. And then we're also going to be putting up a shade cloth coming up right through here. Now these determinate tomatoes get about uh, five feet high. So they're going to probably be about right here. Now how we're going to be judging this experiment is we're going to be seeing which of these of the fertilizers that we selected uh, is going to provide the first fruit, which of them is going to allow the plant to stay the healthiest, the longest, which one of these fertilizers is going to allow the plants to stay the greenest, the longest, and how much fruit by pounds we're going to be able to harvest from these tomato plants. So now what we're going to do is we had one drawback, uh, we had a army worm uh, attack one of these plants, actually two of these plants, and they're starting to come back uh, alive again. It was actually another plant that did a while back, even uh, before this, and that plant has survived. So I feel like these plants will survive as well. This is the other red snapper tomato that was attacked by, I think it was either army worms or, uh, a tomato hornworm. We're going to add some uh, fertilizer to this and we're going to apply the recommended amount of dosage of the fertilizer that the bag uh, recommends for each one of these uh, plants and fertilizer bags. That's one thing I didn't do last time. I should have took that into consideration is the amount of uh, fertilizer is recommended for each of the bag. I just basically did it, everything as one, which it wasn't the case, should have been the case. Now, the only difference is with the worm casting that I'm going to be using, it's, I'm just going to go by probably a scoop full from a regular scoop since that is very low in both uh, the macronutrients of the MP and K. So one thing that we didn't do from the last video is I didn't add the uh, eggs in there. I probably could still go ahead and do it. And we've already said that 
We know that the egg isn't going to break down uh, by the end of the year. It's going to take some several times. So it feels like some people think it's uh, useless. However, the nutrients from the egg yolks and the whites, you'll be, the plants will be able to take up. A lot of people were saying that they use uh, the fish emulsion from Alaskan. Uh, this, we're just using granular uh, fertilizer because it takes a while to break down. And most of the time that's readily available for, especially for first time gardeners. We will be doing an experiment with fish emulsion here soon. Uh, with liquid fertilizer, I should say. So we're just going to do a granular fertilizer to all of these for this experiment only. All right, let me show you what fertilizer that we're going to be using. We're going to put it in on um, in these containers and then we're going to mulch it. We ran out of straw, uh, but we do have some of uh, some Timothy hay that we normally feed to the rabbits as a tree in an additional supplement, but we're just gonna do about two inches on here. It's gonna add a little bit more nitrogen for each one of these, and it's gonna be uh, break down a lot faster as well. Glad I checked the uh, camera died on me, the battery, but y'all kinda got the logist of it. So we're just going, we'll continue on if y'all catch on to it or not. We'll just go that route. All right, so here we go. We, on this one, we got Holly Tone. Now, normally, I only got this one because it was on sale. Now, with the Holly Tone, it does have a, uh, a high sulfur. It has a 5% sulfur. And what that sulfur does is going to bring your pH uh, of your soil down. And because with tomatoes, they like very acidic soil. And the, the, if you have your pH balance correct, along with your nutrients that you're going to be having into your soil, your plant is going to be able to take up that nutrients a lot better. So when we're watering, uh, we did a soil test a while back and basically the same mixture that we did in our, our garden beds here, the same thing that we did for the garden tone or for the containers, I should say. So I know we have a lot of potassium, we have a lot of calcium and our pH is very high. So this sulfur is gonna help bring it down. If it's uh, good enough for the tomatoes, we'll see. Uh, for this one, once again, they want uh, about six teaspoons. So we're gonna add six teaspoons to this. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm, I am gonna kind of rough these in all later on. Just uh, let's see, this is Espoma Holly Tone. And we have another, another worm here. I'm gonna see if I can feed this to the chickens. Y'all don't have to see this. Now this one looks kind of bad. Look like something's been really eating this good. We'll cut some of these dead limbs off. So that way it could be going to the, that energy could be going to the plant. This is the Redmond's uh, soil conditioner, soil foundation. Uh, it's high SE silicate, minerals, humate, helps uh, give uh, the nematodes, fungi, bacteria, protozoa, has a lot of calcium, sodium, and chlor chlorine. Hmm. And it's derived from the volcanic ash, humid, humic acid, and hylate. Good for gardens, raised beds, pasture, lawns, ornamental grasses, and containers. All right, so it's the same thing. We're gonna do, oh, there we go. We're gonna do four. Now, Redmond actually now has this on their website for our consumers and uh, viewers to purchase. Ooh. Uh, to purchase, so if you go to the website and use our affiliate code, 
uh, you'll be able to get a discount at checkout. All right, so here we have another one. We've got some flowers. We're gonna take the flowers off. We're not ready for flowers just yet. We're gonna cut this stem off, give that energy to the main plant. For this one, we're gonna use tomato tone. Now with tomato tone, it does have a high sulfur, not as high as the holly tone. It's 2.5%. And this one's again, six pounds or six tablespoons, I'm sorry. Now we normally grow uh, heirloom tomatoes, but uh, we wanted to try that. Plus it's a determinate tomato. So we knew we would be able to get a lot of fruit from it. I got another one in here. Come and get these things. Uh, this one is gonna be the plant tone. With the plant tone, it only has 1% sulfur. Uh, here we need five teaspoons. So let's get five teaspoons. All right, and this was plant tone. With granular fertilizer, you want to use it about weekly or at least every two weeks. Uh, that gives the fertilizer time to break down. Uh, it's a slow releasing fertilizer, so the, uh, fer the granular fertilizer has to break down for the, all your microorganisms and your microbes and all of these fungi, bacteria to be feeding off of this from breaking down, that which is gonna allow the plant to take it up. Now we will be applying a liquid fertilizer uh, twice a week, or every two weeks, I should say. And what that's gonna do is allow that nutrients to take up immediately and be feeding the plants. Oh man, there's another. Golly, this one's hard to get all. Get off me. Hmm. I don't know about this one, folks. We'll see. I'm going to, I was going to do this uh, all purpose, but I'm going to switch it over here. And then I'm going to do the worm casting on this one. I think the worm casting can help revive this one. So we're going to put worm casting. Up in there. I go get the scoop. So this is gonna be the all purpose uh, fertilizer. It has, I guess I should have marked it on there. It has a balance of four, 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 four. So that's four nitrogen, four phosphate, four po uh, potassium. All right, so we're gonna just use one of these. Let's mix this up a little bit. There we go. All right, and that's that. Then we're gonna scratch all, all of these in. Make sure we get it well incorporated into the soil. So here we have some Oh, this is alfalfa. I thought it was Timothy. Some alfalfa hay. We're just gonna mulch it up pretty nice and good here. Now, probably asking, why am I doing this experiment? Well, we do a lot of experiments on our channel, especially in the gardening, gardening rounds, because we want to make sure that people aren't just telling us to do things just to do things. Uh, we, we like to know why things do. And then especially with new gardeners out, you know, they might not know what fertilizer is the best fertilizer or if one particular should be used or whatnot like that. When you can really, I feel you could use just about anything. The best fertilizer I feel 
is going to be either worm castings or compost your own compost because you're going to know where it's coming from and whatnot so we're going to do it this way the mulch is going to help keep the soil nice and cool during these hot months it's going to help retain the moisture and prevent the compaction for when you're watering and whatnot then it's going to allow to feed the soil by once it breaks down you're going to have something for the soil to feed off of along with the fertilizer that you're going to be using and you could use just about anything from leaves compost uh hay straw long as it's not to see and you know where it comes from definitely got to know the sources uh, but with this alfalfa it has a high new high uh, nitrogen in it and it's going to help feed that plant once it breaks down So if the tomato hornworms, the armory worms, cut worms get a little bit too excessive and start uh, attacking our tomato and pepper plants way more than what we can manage because especially tomato hornworms, they can kill a plant or eat a whole plant up and within overnight. Uh, we'll make a solution about that. If you have issues with your tomato and pepper plants and you want to figure out how to uh, prevent pests from eating on that. We did a video about that. We'll put that off to the side and also in the description down below. Until the next video, let's grow together.